Right. I'm Helen Lederer. Uh, I'm a comedian from the 1980s, not the 80s age, although I'm quite close. And I've set up the Comedy Women in Print Prize, of which I'll be celebrating here at the festival. And I've just done a rather stretching gig about the purpose of play and work. Lovely. And so you've part of the debates. Why do we need ideas still? Why do we need debates and talks and festivals like this? The atmosphere of people being here knowing that they have to talk is actually quite unusual. So um, rather than people being buttoned up and sort of shy, which can be an indulgence, can be, you know, you're in either, you could inherit shyness, God forbid, but some people are inherited. There's no shyness here because people are here to talk and listen and posit opinions. It's quite unique. I love it. Talking is it's amazing. Have you ever been a shy person? Have you always been a talker? <laughs> I'm, I don't like silences. I'm not great at them. I can fill. I can sort of, I can sort of go in there. I can talk about minutiae just so there isn't a silence. It may not make sense. And then if I carry on talking, I can get myself back. I think that comes from being a comedian where you, um, it's like a sheepdog. You, you just have to be controlling. It doesn't always work clearly, but um, I'm not shy, but I'm quite private. So this is the perfect, the perfect platform where you don't have to actually be that personal, but you can actually exchange views and learn. It's brilliant. And so you launched the Female Comedy Prize. Could you tell us more about this and why you felt the need to launch it? So I launched the Comedy Women in Print Prize. I've been banging on about it for four years. I've exhausted myself. Um, and I've actually asked how the light gets in festival to do something before. And this year they're doing it. They're, I've got a whole hour. I'm bringing a comedian with me, Shazia Mercer. And Harper Collins is offering a publishing deal to the winner of the unpublished. So the unpublished winner gets a novel and five grand advance. And the published novel gets a bit of money. But it's so important to shine a light on funny female fiction. There has been no price for it in the past. Um, so I just have to crack on, really. Are there alternative or other prizes out there, similar, which aren't picking up women's and female voices? The only other women's prize is uh, one, it's called the Women's Prize for Female Fiction, which is great, and that's been going for 17, 20 years, I don't know, but, you know, that's established and it's great uh, and um, needed, but nothing for wit, nothing for women witty authors. And I think this year more than ever although I was there doing it in the 80s, it's suddenly, yeah, wit, women's wit's driving the agenda. And I go, excuse me, I was, you know, it's not new, but, and there have always been funny women writers in history, but they haven't been visible. So um, there was a gap in the market. That's not really why I did it. I did it because I was just cross and bitter. And um, that's quite a good motivator because, yeah, I'm still cross and bitter and we now have a prize for it. And do you think there's something different about women's wit to men's wit, or you just think that it's not as uh, like vocal or like not given enough attention? Yeah, no, it's a good question because um, if if you look at the statistics, out of twenty four humorous books, twenty this year have been written by women. So the point is, it's clearly happening, and yet there isn't. A literary prize to shine a light on it and I'm not saying literary prizes come up with the best winner they never do it's all a process and the vibes in the room and the scoring system and the mood you know you never get the best it but it isn't about that it's about creating a platform of of merit uh, and uh, people turn up to the awards and then it's good I hope <laughs> what um so you talked about there's like a financial prize is that one of the what's the main barriers that are stopping women's voices from being heard in comedy or recognized well when you again when you look at the body of work and the, the fact that in the unpublished category we had like 200 entries so people had to have written a novel in order to send it in so there's definitely the work is there and where there isn't a, a, a parity is that the publishers have not woken up to this um, and they haven't seen it as um, an opportunity. Um, and then next year we want to expand it into non-fiction because if you think about Catelyn Moran, I'm sure you've read that. I mean, my daughter's read that. That's a kind of coming of age group, you know, how to be a girl, how to be a woman. There are sort of game-changing books out there. Um, 
and it, uh, it's really important to shine a light on those. So there's loads of work out there, so why shouldn't there be a prize? You've got your booker, uh, you've got your coster, you've got your thisy, you've got the thatty, and now you've got something a bit different, and it's about women being individuals. So obviously in the judging room, there were fisticuffs. Uh, people have very definite ideas about comedy. Um, people get very angry when people differ, but it, that's what it does. So we're trying to say it's okay to be an individual and a woman isn't quirky, trying to ban the word quirky from a witty female voice. They're not quirky. They're just doing what Virginia Woolf or Muriel Spark did. And do you think that separating women out as its own sort of genre of fiction could actually make it be seen as not equal or not mm -hmm. on the same platform? Well, I mean, I understand that. Um, I mean, it is a bit bizarre when you're going you know, with all this kind of equality, you're actually sort of doing a single gender. So there, there's a sort of paradox there. But I think because one didn't exist, there is a need. And when there isn't a need, then I'd be very happy to not do it and get on my own blooming work, which has suffered hugely. So there's quite a personal sacrifice in yeah. sort of becoming a spokesperson. Yeah, because I can't, honestly, I've never administrated anything. I can't manage people. I think everyone hates me. I'm quite paranoid and bitter and very difficult with people. So I am actually making, I am not the person who should be doing this. But I did it. I jumped in. I had the idea. And I'm hoping that it can be taken forward by somebody more sensible. Have you felt like it's been quite a sympathetic or supportive environment, like the literary world, in your creating this prize? I've, I notice when I ask people uh, if they were interested, everyone said it was a great idea. So you sort of know. It's like when you come up with a, a notion, like, I don't know, uh, PayPal, the guy who did PayPal. Obviously, it worked because nobody thought of it. So I, there was one person, a literary agent, said she didn't think there was enough female fiction to warrant one female funny fiction, I should say. And I said, well, that's why we need the prize. So that was the only dissent. So the thing is, never listen to people in authority. Just do it. Is that something you've always thought? Or? Yeah. I hate authority figures. I hate them. I had a really strict headmistress. She had a dog. And I always got into trouble. I don't like people who say no. Going back to this festival, it's so open-hearted and open-minded. It, it's my bliss. Because when you meet someone, you just know, oh, we're going to have a conversation. You don't have to go through all those barriers uh, of, of judgment and status and all that hoo-ha. And you've written fiction yourself, and you've also written autobiography. Well, I haven't written the autobiography. That's because of the prize. That's the prize's fault. So um, as soon as somebody else jumps in and does this, then I'm going to be writing a comedy memoir that may you may see in the car boot, because this does, this does tend to happen quite quickly, autobiography, car boot. But hey, I just have to do it. At this stage in my life, I've just got to get it down there. Have you felt like comedy has been a way for you to deal with your own female experience or experience of life? Or do you think it can be a way that you sort of don't deal with reality or experience of life? Um, well, I was just saying in the play versus work workshop that, you know, obviously being a fat, asthmatic child with a hairband, that is a great criteria to become a comedian. Um, and there are two fat people in my class and the other one wasn't funny. So the whole point of being who we are and using humor to, I don't know, make life uh, purposeful, I suppose for me, humor and being historical, if I possibly can, is my go-to place. And it's a way of engaging with other people and having that relationship. Humour really does do that, doesn't it? I mean, um, obviously it doesn't win over everyone. It can be very annoying, especially if I talk too much. But I just think being playful in your work is probably uh, quite useful as a device. And have you found in... You do stand-up comedy yourself... Um, have you found that a realm which is open also to women and uh, women's experiences? Yeah, well, now there's no need. You know, I mean, when I started, there were three women. Two of them had to have the same name. They're both called Jenny, so it wasn't a stretch for the compare to introduce them. Um, and French and Saunders had already become, you know, an organization and were being championed by the BBC, quite rightly. So the, it was always one woman on the bill and very rare. Of course, now... 
I went to a gig, I had to judge this LGBT um, uh, comedy show uh, the other night, which is amazing. You think, wow, you know, the material has changed, the boundaries have changed. Uh, and yet, it's still, can that person make that room laugh? So um, there are more opportunities, there are more agents uh, exploiting people, making more money, uh, there are more chat shows because it's cheap TV. You know, it's all, nothing stays the same. But um, I'm, I'm pleased I did it. I didn't particularly enjoy it, but then I'm not on this earth to enjoy things. What do you think you are on this earth? To do? <laughs> I don't Is know, there a just to try and crack on. I think. I think doing the prize, it can't stop now. It's kind of like, I've got to do something. I just felt I had to do something. What could I do? Other people are doing this. Other, It's just that need to do something. And with all of us, you go, well, what, what's affected you? What do you feel angry about? What, what can you do? I mean, I don't have the wherewithal. I'm not like Division A. I can't just conjure up money to do a huge thing. It's a small thing. It started small. So you have to do what you can do. And you've talked slightly a bit about, you said that you were the fat kid at school and so you chose, and you were funny, so you went, you chose comedy. Do you think that's quite a sort of current or like a similar theme throughout uh, comics' lives that they are in a sort of a difficult position or slightly out of the group, hmm. so they use comedy? So. I think it's quite usual, but we all think we're the outsider. It's a bit of an affectation. You probably think you're the outsider and you're not remotely fat. So, of course, now you can't actually use fat in the same way because we've all moved with our language and our awareness and feminism has really kind of evolved. So, you know, you, now I wouldn't um, talk about it in the same way, but I just remember as a child, I was different from other people. And w when you're different, you have to make it work. And are there sort of, to use this interview, are there um, like female comedians or female writers that you would recommend to people who Yes. That you think should be championed? Or... Well, obviously the world knows, even Donald Trump would know the word Phoebe Waller-Bridge now. I mean, that, that is an amazing phenomenon. What's interesting is we get individual women, like a few years ago it was Miranda. So it's like the world wants to do it, but they, don't, they can do it like with one iconic figure, which is great. So what we need is to go, and now can we all mesh in a kind of ensemble way, as is the case with you know, clusters and clusters of male performer, writer, commissioning editors. So, but it's a start, but it would be quite nice not to have individuals uh, put on pedestals, so as brilliant as they are. And I'm sure Phoebe is such a team player. I didn't get a BAFTA the other night and I saw her on stage. Um, <laughs> and she is so lovely and so embracing and creating work for other people and so switched on. So, you know, that's what we need. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.